Since 1974, the assault on the 200-mile-an-hour barrier had been put on hold. When officials repaved the track in the summer of 76, it was time to dust off the record books. During practice in 1977, several drivers clocked laps over 200. Whether that number would make it to pole day was anyone's guess. 200 is still a magic number, I think. Uh, no matter what you do, 200 mile an hour, it just sounds fast, it is fast. But to be able to run 200 miles an hour back in the, in the 70s, you know, was a, a pretty good challenge. Cold day is barely an hour old when Tom Sneva takes aim at 200. It's the new track record. Sneva wastes no time. He eclipses the magic mark on his first lap. He then shatters the one lap record with a speed of 200.535 miles an hour. Sneva is on the pole and in the history books. It was a very proud feeling, more, more than anything. You know, we were proud of that accomplishment. Uh, you know that there's always going to be new track records and people are going to go faster and faster, but be, to be the first person to run the 200 mile, that magic mark, uh, you know, that's something they can't take away from you. Janet Guthrie returned to Indy with hopes of making some history of her own. I didn't go into Indy car racing feeling as if I had to prove something because I was a woman. That uh, perspective was uh, forced upon me to my considerable surprise. As a driver, every driver has something to prove to themselves. When it's time to qualify, a sick engine threatens Guthrie's run at the record books. She's got the speed, but will her motor make it? When I last looked at the oil pressure gauge coming out of turn four approaching the checker, it was nailed to zero. And if the engine blew up between there and the starting line, that was it, there would be no more chances. So what I mostly felt when I saw the checker, yes, I knew I had made it, I knew I had the speed from the tachometer, uh, but there was also that great relief that the engine had lasted. History made. Another barrier broken. Guthrie becomes the first woman to qualify for the Indianapolis 500. She'll start 26. They uh, came to realize that I was just what I said I was, a racing driver who happened to be a woman. The woman part didn't make a darn bit of difference. Company with the first lady ever to qualify at Indianapolis Gentlemen, start your engine. Al Lunzer rushes to the front. A cluster of contenders battle to challenge the leader. That is car 27, Janet Guthrie's car, now slowing on the race course. Guthrie pits on lap 26. Her historic day done in by a bad timing gear. As the field sorts itself out, Gordon Johncock leads. A.J. Foyt positions himself into second. A.J. Foyt coming in. I've got a stopwatch on him. How close are they? And Foyt is about nine seconds behind oh, Gordon Johncock. And Gordon Johncock moving by us. Now here's A.J. Foyt during the turn number four. Johncock begins to pull away. Gordy is poised to erase a series of bad breaks for the STP team and win another May Classic. A.J. Foyt, an interval of 6.82 seconds between the leader, Johncock, the second place car, Foyt. Foyt is closing the gap. Johncock might be running out of fuel. You're running out there and never gave a thought about the crankshaft breaking. Uh, the carburation was right, the fuel mileage was good, uh, the car was running good, and, and he was just running, and he wasn't overdriving or anything, he was just going well, and uh, it was just amazed that the damn thing stopped. So the chase is on, but Gordon Johncock has pulled over to the left side of the straightaway. He appears to be slowing. He has cut his car in off of the apron at the south end of the main straightaway. Really even happened to run that hard because we were so far ahead of him and, and then all of a sudden the, the engine just let go and 
pulled down in the guard rail and turn one went down laid in the creek and cooled off. 77, I'll have to say, was the biggest disappointment in my racing career. After leading 129 laps, a blown engine crushes John Cox's chances of a second in D win. Once again, Foyt is the beneficiary of bad luck. From the dusty tracks of Texas, the Racing Hall of Fame, and there goes Foyt toward turn three. And the crowd on its feet is A.J. Foyt. They're waving at him, waving him on through turn number three, off of three, into the short shoot. I had tears in my eyes the last four or five laps because I guess the good Lord wanted me to run 500 miles and be a true 500-mile winner four times because I felt last year and year before last that we had a good shot at winning the race, and the rain come along and we lost the race, but uh, I'm glad it worked out like it did. A.J. Foyt down the main straightaway. The checkered flag is out. A.J.'s hand in the air. He is the winner. A.J. Foyt at Indianapolis has won his fourth 500-mile race. A momentous month in 500 history ends with a living legend pulling into victory lane. To be the first man to ever do something like that after so many years that people have been there trying to, I was very happy. And finally I asked my dad, I said, well, you're petting everybody on the back. What a great job they did today. I said, what did I do? He said, you had a little part in it. And that's all he ever said. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess that was about the nicest words he ever spoke to me after a race. I don't think there was anybody more deserving. You know, he, he didn't, uh, it wasn't handed to him. He earned it. And he did it, you know, from a, a period I like to say where we all ran the same kind of cars. I still consider him the greatest driver to ever uh, bolt on a helmet and uh, strap himself into a race car. During post-race ceremonies, Speedway President Tony Hallman joined Foyt in the pace car for a special victory lap. In regards to how many more men went it four times, uh, being the first to do it after 50-something years really meant a lot to me, and especially with Mr. Holman, because we got to be very close and, and very good friends, and I think he was awful thrilled to, to see me be the first man to win it four times. In October, Speedway owner Tony Holman passed away at the age of 76. Holman transformed the dilapidated brickyard into an auto racing shrine and made the Indy 500 an American tradition. Hi folks, Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.